Okay, oh, Caroline, Caroline's Caroline's not here. She and, called you. Yeah, she called. Okay, on the way over here, she called and said that she didn't know um, what was going on. Like, she didn't know that we were meeting here today and that uh, we were sick, or she was sick. Mm -hmm. So I asked her, like, um, you know, because it was still, like, 2.20. It's like, I can come get you or we can, you can drive over here. And she just wasn't really up for that. But she did sound kind of sick, so I'm assuming that, you know, she was just sick and... I mean, I'm sure she's probably not feeling well, and I do care about her, but she also told me she hoped we lose because she was tired of doing this. And I'm like, well, why don't you just quit? <laughs> you know, it's like, why drag... We don't want to lose. We actually put a lot of hard work into this. And she's like, I know, but I just, I'm tired of it. And and she wants to stay because she feels guilty. Like, she feels like her... her she told me, like, her mom doesn't think she's a quitter and she'd be quitting this. And like I think she's in this for the wrong reason. It's like you should be in this pro, doing this show, doing this whole process, because for yourself, not because you don't want what you you don't want to think what your mom's thinking about you. Part of it is like it's supposed to be a growing and a learning experience for all of us. Right. And I know it's about winning, but at the same time, it's not just like oh you're dead weight. Let me cut you well, off before the gangrene but, spreads. <laughs> I don't think she's dead weight, <laughs> but I also don't think she wants to do it. I mean, she said to That's me, true. I don't want to do this. I'm only here because my mom thinks I'm a quitter. As our solution, um, we're hoping to increase the number of people who are home, home buyer ready um, in you know X amount of years, and starting with families like yourself, just kind of working down the line to until you get yourself in the position where you are ready to buy a house, and it's not um, because you're desperate to buy one, but it's because you're ready to buy one. I think it would if you could just try one of you try and make one of the classes yeah. on first time home buyer. I mean, it's it's better than not going and ask questions when you're there. That's the one thing I learned going to it, because I don't want to tell you guys to go to it if I hadn't gone to it. Too, <laughs> going like... to a credit union would probably be a first step, um, and then just starting to take some of these classes and get better educated before I make a choice. Because in order to buy a house, I know it's going to take a, it's going to take a while. You know, it's, going to take, it's going to take some effort, but if I don't start now, then when am I going to start? Part of the show, the camera crew. Sorry. Yeah. What's up? This is straight up. Like, um, we're we're filming we're actually right now. I thought you might be done at like 12 or 1. Oh my god. <laughs> do you want to go? Eat? Do you want to go eat and then we can film and I can call you? Is that on for real? Yes, yeah, beautiful. Oh. All right. Call, so. I'll, I'll call you when I'm done. Is that cool? Hey. All right. Take boxers. Yes. Bye. They're hot. Oh, hey, dude, we yes. told you 11 o'clock. We told you 11 and we're 20 minutes late. So yeah, yeah, but then you called me and you were like, no, we're not going to do Diana anymore. Yeah, we're going to do four Diana at 4. Remember? But we're still meeting we're at 11. We're still meeting at 11. Oh, well, um... Put some pants on. <laughs> Put some pants on. <laughs> Can I start with the problems then? Oh, you just, you just want to get on this, Nicolette don't you? Nicolette is so, Dude. Nicolette is so eighth grade teacher. She's <laughs> like, kindergarten, man. I'm, I'm telling you. She's like, okay, we're done with Play-Doh. Put it away now. Put it away now. It's time for recess. Time for recess. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. Just take a nap. Take, take a nap. Y'all are talking too much. Take a nap. All right, so. Nap? During my interview It's spelled N-A-P. Excuse me. <laughs> Damn. Do you feel like you've been marginalized this morning? Nicolette? Yes, being the only woman of this group has many challenges. Yeah. Um. Our first thought was to lower, was to lower the interest rate um, so people can afford a better priced home. The loans um, made by this program will be 1% f uh, fixed interest rate loan. What we're telling you with our plan is if it does get implemented, by the time that you get to a situation where you can't afford a home, you'll be able to get a better home than what you could now. Okay. That's why if we lower the, that's why we showed you that scale. If we lower the percentage rate, instead of getting a house that costs dollars $290,000, you can get a home or what, some, something else for maybe three hundred fifty, even four hundred thousand dollars. Speaking on, a, on camera, I think, makes anyone a little nervous. 
like I am now. And um, two, I mean, this is, I think all of us put so much time and energy in, into a solution, into like all this work and going up there and this is like the final day where all of your weeks of preparation comes down to 10 minutes. Yeah, 10 minutes is 10 minutes enough on time. a stage and someone's gonna say yay or nay. And that's very nerve wracking to know that all that time comes into this tiny little funnel. But, I mean, we're, I think that, I'm sure there's a lot of great solutions out there and I hope that all teams decide to run with them after, even if they're eliminated. I know our, I know our team, you know, we're, we're good to go on our solution, so even if we get eliminated, we have definite plans on just making it work. I learned a lot about this area and a lot about life in general. <laughs> like, it's not perfect. <laughs> How do you guys think you'll do? I'm hoping. I'm hoping I do. We do well. I mean, no matter what, I've done well. We've all done well. I mean, I made some personal goals for myself that I feel like I've accomplished. So if I go to the next round, that's like the icing. If I made it through this round, I feel lucky to be on the show. I mean, at times it's like I'm gonna have a nervous breakdown, but for the most part, it's not. It's been really valuable. I mean, I guess I like the fact that I like raising the bar for myself, and this is really raising the bar, like being under a microscope, being filmed, being you know. Everything you say could be totally taken out of context, but also find out information I had no clue about. And Nicholas, Nicholas, can you going on now? Are you going on now? Yeah. 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 Well, in all honesty, I'm too busy to be nervous. Like, my whole team were all overcommitted, and we have so many other commitments going on that we had to squeeze all our preparation into like hours at midnight, or you know. So, we honestly ha we didn't really prepare together. We just kind of decided what we're gonna say individually. So, what, what happens is gonna happen. So. I'm a little like personally, it, I wish we had more time to prepare together, but our schedules wouldn't allow it. So, yeah. I just wonder, even at 270,000 moving into 330. You think I'm going to throw off? You're not. You'll be fine. Deep yoga breath. Deep what? Deep yoga breath. It's coming up. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Our first step was to meet the family, but before we could meet our family, we had to come up with questions. Right? Mm -hmm. There you go. That's what there I There you say. go. That, that. Um, so if we go back to the family, then right. we're going to deal with it. Deciding how well our team has done on this. I wonder is what a big. Awesome, and I feel best. so good about it. And win or lose, like I'm so proud of our team because I mean, I'm just so proud of, of our team. I'm gonna cry. I'm so I'm proud of Carolyn. I'm proud of Robert. They did an awesome, awesome job. Okay, so team one, congratulations. Uh, and thank you very much. We lost. Walk in there. The, the walk of shame. Yeah. So we lost. Yeah. And that's horrible, but um, yeah. you know, it's still not really discouraged because we were gonna go forth with our solution, and we have a nonprofit ready to go, and we have the funding ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and go forth with it. But I mean, it's just. We didn't leave you behind today. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You guys are good job. That education component, yeah, I know that was all y'all, right? Because you know we fought over that for like hours, we did. right? We, we did. fought over that for like hours. Exactly. Literally, a couple hours. I actually caused my current grades and education to slide. Um, I'm used to being a 4.0 to 3.5 to 4.0 student, and my grades are actually sliding because of this. Have I learned a lot? Yes. Would I want to learn it in time frame while other classes are going on? No. I mean, I would, I would normally spend, you know, nights and weekends working on homework and having a, a social life. Now I'm, I'm having to spend, you know, all my waking moments either doing this plan, working with these fantastic individuals, or trying to catch up on sleep, which I'm hardly getting anything of. It's very interactive. 
you know, um, it's very hands-on. I like that, and that's how it's different from other classes. You know, I learn in books. This is actually applied. You know, it's taking my seven years of sociology, and, you know, this is the best way to make it happen. So. And I've learned so much. I've met two wonderful people in the process. I've met a bunch of wonderful people on productions and had a lot of fun with them ducking in and out of the corners. And the experience as a whole has just been unreal. And the experience that I've gotten from everything I've learned about home buying is just unreal. Because I feel like I could go teach somebody to go buy a home right now. When you get sick, have you had any problems with, um, because you don't have health insurance, how has it affected you? I found out about, um, I found about a year ago um, that we didn't have health insurance. Um, I was down in San Diego for a rugby tournament mm -hmm. and um, I had a corneal abrasion, and um, uh, which is, someone poked me in the eye while <laughs> during the game. Wow. I mean, of all things, I mean, I could have got tackled or something, but no, it was a poke in the eye, and that sent me to the emergency room, and um, that cost about, I think, it's $500 for the eye exam, another 500 just waiting in the emergency room, and um, probably like $30, $40 for the uh, medication, which was just eye drops, uh, antibacterial eye drops, and my parents, all they said was, oh, just charge it to the credit card. And um, they feel that, you know, because it's not, it's not going to happen often, it's yeah. okay to just pay cash. Mm -hmm. My parents have always told me that um, every day before I step outside of the house, they're always, their health insurance for me is be safe. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. don't get hit by a car. What's your current state with health insurance right now? Last time I had health insurance was under my mother, which was when I was 23, which was three years ago. Um, because I was still considered a student, um, I was covered under her insurance. The reason I haven't had insurance for three years is it's been too expensive with the jobs I've had. Um, while I was going to San Jose State, I was working three, I think the max I was working was five jobs at one time in full-time school. Oh, wow. So um, part-time jobs normally don't offer very good, <laughs> you know, Coverage and going out and getting your own coverage is very expensive. But I haven't gotten new new glasses in three years. Uh, no con, no new contacts. Um, I don't even remember when my last physical was. So what's really preventing you from getting your health insurance? Medical for me hasn't been a top priority because I haven't been able to afford it. So it's you know, do you sacrifice? What do you sacrifice to get it, and can you sacrifice? It's kind of hard to sacrifice when you don't have anything to sacrifice. Brock told us about how he was not able to get health insurance and all of his difficulties doing it. And I think it changed how I looked at my life because I've never had that difficulty. My parents have always, you know, I'm still a little kid in their house basically, and they've always taken care of my health insurance. And so when I heard from Brock, like how he was doing it, made me like look at it from a different point of view and realize there's people out there that it's so frustrating. Like they don't know how to get health insurance, but they know they need it. They know that if anything happens, they're going to be in so much trouble. So um, I really, I like, I empathize with him and I really wanted to help him. And um, from what he's explained from us, I really do think we are going to be able to find him a solution. If you put him on a scale, he's, I'd say, a little above the middle. I mean, because he's not in a situation where he really needs health care at the moment. Um, it's unfortunate that he doesn't have health care. And hopefully we can find him a solution so he can get, you know, new glasses since it has been three years since he's been seen by an eye doctor. and. You know, just for minor health care needs, I mean, he should have a doctor by his side. Compared to the 7 million people who, you know, I mean, there, there are, of the 7 million people who are uninsured in California, they're not all sick, right? But we do have people who don't have insurance, who are very sick, who need medicine, who need medical care, and who can't get it. So, you know, compared to the other, you know, some other situations, his is not urgent. <laughs>